Welcome to our latest video of Together Apart. To start off with, I'd love for you to think about your challenge from last week. So last week's challenge was for you to do one thing during the week to try and build deeper connections with your family and friends. So how did you get on? Was it easy? Hard? And would it be something that you might want to try and continue? So do you feel like it did anything to your relationship with God while you were doing that? So even if you were able to do the challenge just once, that's a great way to start. And if you didn't, well, then it would be good for you to have a think about why you didn't feel able to. So this week, we're going to start with our story. So get comfy for this. Over the last 10 years, no film genre has been more all-conquering than the superhero movie. Since the original Iron Man was released back in 2008, various studios and cinematic universes have released well over a hundred films about the adventures and struggles of superhuman characters. Some of them, like Avengers Endgame, broke box office records. Others, like 2011's Green Lantern, proved that even superheroes can flop. Overwhelmingly, though, these movies sent cinema goers streaming to the local multiplex, often for midnight showings that start at the exact moment of their release. So what is it about these films which make them so enduringly popular? Why, after nearly 25 Marvel movies, are fans eagerly anticipating the next 10? There are many answers, but perhaps the most simple is this. We're excited by the idea of a person who can do more, whether it's flying, scaling skyscrapers, or even just having the money to build an arsenal of cool suits and vehicles. We're intoxicated by the idea of amazing powers. Realistic movies are fine, but there's something undeniably cool about epic battles between the supercharged forces of good and the kind of monstrous evil that we know no normal human could ever defeat. However, Hollywood has a bit of a problem. With so many of these movies now in existence, especially those featuring the most iconic superheroes like Batman, Superman and Spider-Man, there's an increasing sense of repetition. A danger that a movie will just do what someone else did before. And since they're all based on comic book heroes, the latest films will have to scrape further and further to the bottom of the barrel of potential characters. They can't just go on making Thor films forever. Which means producers will have to look at some of the more obscure comic book heroes as potential protagonists for their movies. Characters like Squirrel Girl, a little known Marvel star with a furry tail and the ability to gnaw through wood, or Funny Man, a strange hero from the 1940s who was part crime fighter, part clown. Either could eventually get their own movie. The Squirrel Girl film even reportedly has a script. As could DC Comics' Matter Eater Lad, a boy who can eat anything. Even stranger is, and we stress this isn't a joke, arm fall off man who had the power to quickly detach his limbs in the manner of a plastic doll. Quite why you'd need to do that is a mystery but perhaps one they'll solve in the movie version coming summer 2045. The source material might be running a bit thin, but there's no doubting the world's continued appetite for superhero movies. We love them because of their escapism, because they allow us to imagine what it might be like to have access to so much power that you could command lightning or lift a building or quickly detach your arm. Over the next 10 years, it's likely there will be at least another 100 films added to the genre. It turns out that nothing sells movie tickets like superhuman power. So how do you feel about superhero movies? Do you love them all or only love some or hate the whole genre? Why do you think these films are so popular? What do you think people love about them? Well, there could be lots of reasons from liking the action scenes, the storylines, the characters, or maybe they have memories of the comic books. If you could have the powers of any superhero, which would you choose and why? Wow, well, there's so many to choose from. You could have the ability to fly, super strength, be invisible, move things with your mind, power over nature. The list goes on and on. So which would you pick? And why?
Do you think it's possible to have superhuman abilities in real life? So why or why not? Maybe the ability to fly unaided isn't possible, but there are stories of people having superhuman strength in times of emergencies. If you think along the lines of Iron Man, he didn't have abilities, but with the help of technology, he could save the world. So in the Bible, at the start of the book of Acts, we get a kind of a superhero origin story as Jesus introduces his followers to the Holy Spirit. But the incredible news he shares is not that the Spirit will be powerful among them, but within them. They will be given access to the power of God. We're going to read in the Bible now from Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 4. Once when Jesus was eating with them, he told them not to leave Jerusalem. He said, wait here until you receive what the father promised to send. Remember, I told you about it before. John baptized people with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The apostles were all together. They asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time for you to give the people of Israel their kingdom again? Jesus said to them, the father is the only one who has the authority to decide dates and times. They are not for you to know. But the Holy Spirit will come on you and give you power. You will be my witnesses. You will tell people everywhere about me, in Jerusalem, in the rest of Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world. So in this passage, Jesus tells his followers to wait and that God will give them this gift of power. He doesn't just hand it to them over dinner. They have to demonstrate that they're ready and willing for it. Jesus describes receiving the Holy Spirit as being like a baptism. Water baptism is symbolic of receiving God's cleansing and entering a new kind of life. In the same way, God's Holy Spirit renews us and offers us a different experience of being human. In verse 8, Jesus says that they'll receive power, the indescribable power of God himself. He's essentially telling them that as they're filled with the Holy Spirit, they become superhuman and they'll go out into the world propelled by that power as witnesses, beacons of God's love and power that all will see. As the book of Acts progresses, we see all kinds of supernatural powers being used, speaking in different languages, healing, seeing the future, even teleportation. These are the very last things that Jesus is recorded as saying on earth. Why do you think he left this until last? It's possible Jesus needed the disciples to have had all the time with him to watch his miracles, hear his teachings and watch him die and rise again before they would be ready to hear this final message of his. Why do you think the idea that God's power makes us in a way superhuman? Is it exciting, weird or something else? It's not quite the same as being able to fly or become invisible. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to do things that we couldn't do on our own. This, in its own way, is us being superhuman. We have the help of someone who isn't human. If you could really access God's power, what do you think you would want to do with it? What do you think Jesus wants us to do? Like Spider-Man is told, with great power comes great responsibility. Think of all the good in the world we could see happen if we all use the power of the Holy Spirit to make the right choices all the time. We can ask for the help we need when we feel weak and we can't make the world a better place. I think Jesus would want us to put into practice all his teachings, including things like loving God with all we have and loving the people around us. Because we are all human, this will be really difficult for us to do under our own power and strength, but we don't need to do it on our own. Have you ever experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And would you want to? You might be wondering what baptism of the Holy Spirit actually means or looks like. Well, you become filled, saturated with the Holy Spirit until it covers every part of your being and you become one with the Holy Spirit of God. This connection of becoming one is what God wants. 
He wants to fill your life with his Holy Spirit so that you can be a witness of his love and power. Now, you by yourself can't really do much, but the Holy Spirit through you can do mighty miracles. When you see someone being healed, it has nothing to do with the person who is praying for him or her. It's all to do with the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through that person. Being baptized with the Holy Spirit means to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity. By being filled, you become more like him and you are empowered to do the work that God has called you to do. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everyone, not just for ministers or leaders. We all have work to do and the Holy Spirit helps us, guides us and equips us to do his work. Jesus promised that after he left, we wouldn't be alone on earth. He would send his comforter to guide us and be with us. The Holy Spirit first came to the disciples on the day of Pentecost, which churches still celebrate today. Often this is known as the church's birthday, as it's seen as the beginning of the church as we start to think of it today. God wants this to happen for us, and it's very simple for it to happen. All we need to do is for us to want it to happen and then to ask for it. We need to be open to seeing what can happen when we have the Holy Spirit working in our lives. You can do this anytime, anywhere, and at any age, and as many times as you need this. So do you want this? We're going to have a short video which further explains our theme of power using a real life example. This is the story of how satellites came to be. So you'll find the link for the video in the description of this video. So go ahead now and pause. We're going now to try something different in this video. How do you hear from God? How do you listen out for the promptings of the Holy Spirit? There's going to be a time with some music and I'd like for you to make sure that your phone is put down and try to close your eyes to help you focus. Ask God to speak to you that you want to see the Holy Spirit move. You might hear from God in different ways. It might be a feeling, a picture, words, and this might be something totally new for you. So you can start by asking God questions like, what do you want to teach me today, God? What truths of the Bible do you want me to reflect on? What do you want me to know about who you are, God? What your character is like and what you've done for me? You might feel awkward or vulnerable as you begin, but you can try this exercise as many times as you like.
This week, your challenge is to keep a list or a diary of where you've seen the Holy Spirit move this week. Maybe it's in your life, in answered prayer or feelings of direction from God. Or perhaps it's in the lives of your family, friends, church or the wider world. Write down every time you experience, see, hear something that feels like the spirit is moving. And if you're feeling confident, you could even share it with a friend. I'm now going to close in a time of prayer. Please continue in your own thoughts of prayer once I am finished. God, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that we have a guide and a comforter here on earth once Jesus left. God, help us to be willing and open to having the Holy Spirit in our lives. God, help us to see where the Holy Spirit can move at any time and anywhere and help us to do your work with the Holy Spirit's help. Amen.